All right, let's move into advanced technologies. Cloud native platforms. It helps us to automate infrastructure, provisioning and configuration dynamically. Now, this is very important when it comes to design thinking. If you see the picture there, these are automated infrastructures. So we are no longer talking about only spaces in the cloud. We are also talking about intelligent design thinking centers where all the capital equipment that you may invest in for design thinking, the infrastructure is automated in a way that resources get allocated. Now, is this happening already? It is. And let me share a story with you on how the cloud native platforms are actually working to whatever extent right now. Very interestingly, uh, I mean, my office is located in an area uh, and from here around six kilometers away, there is a building that has come up, which is intelligent offices. Now, what happened during the pandemic situation was that a lot of factories, which are located around 25 kilometers, 30 kilometers from here, people were not able to commute. Also, there is a very interesting thing that has happened, which is uh, people don't want to go to office anymore. In fact, a lot of people are quitting because of the insistence of going to office. So hybrid work environments are now becoming a very popular proposition. Now, oh, maybe this could be a classic uh, architecture case study. I mean, ah, thank you so much. I think that's got, that's how intuition and creative ideas come. Now, here's what happened. They made a building, which is, I think, a 14 or a 15 story building. Each floor has intelligent offices, which are controlled by the real estate management company. Now, how do employees work? An employee from home, from the mobile phone app, can block a conference room, can block a room, can block a workstation, can black, can, can block the uh, equipment that he or she wishes to use, can order for coffee at the time that they want to have. It can get as mundane as that. Now, when the person blocks it over the app, drives down to that office, which is possibly two or three kilometers away from their home. That's how these offices are located. Park the car. Maybe you reserve the parking place also. Park the car, go to the office, get onto your workstation. And unless the app and the workstation syncs together, none of the infrastructures can be activated. Now, this is very interesting. What's happening? It may seem, seem very usual in the way it's working. But this is what happens. The office, which would have been ideally required for 800 people staff, is contained in just 3,000 or 4,000 or maybe 6,000, 8,000 square feet. They have just about 70 to 80 workstations out of which the entire thing is being managed. You know, you don't get electricity even at the power point if you have not blocked it over the app. In fact, your entry into the office is not possible if it's not controlled. So these are intelligent buildings. God alone knows what all is happening in the background. The amount of data that's being captured, the amount of information that's being captured, who knows? But that's the way these cloud native platforms are today seeing the point of reality. I think this can be a great architectural case study also in terms of how these intelligent offices are now operating where they're integrating various technologies into it. And these offices are green, they're sustainable offices, they're eco-friendly. Uh, they also ensure that uh, you get a great experience. The fatigue factor is also taken care of. So it's an integration of a whole lot of things that are happening there. All right. Artificial intelligence engineering. Now, this is developing tools, systems, and processes to enable the application of artificial intelligence in real-world context. We're going to have a lot of artificial intelligence engineers who will work on creation of systems which are enabled through architecture, through the systems-driven uh, processes, engineers who are dealing with technology. All that is extremely important. Now, in design thinking, Artificial intelligence engineers will play a very critical role in the coming times. Let's be very clear about that. Secondly, because design thinking prototypes will certainly be activated through artificial intelligence, 
this technology of artificial intelligence engineering will form a backbone of all the prototypes that shall get created in the future. I gave you the example of a toaster. Let me give you another example, a story to understand how this fits. And by the way, when you're teaching, you wanted uh, techniques in terms of how do you teach design thinking. When you're teaching topics of this kind, storytelling, like I keep saying, works. Technology works. Videos work. Podcasts work. Case studies work. Allowing students to go out and conduct design thinking researches works. Pick up real-time problem situations within your own institutions. Something that your students will usually crib about. You can pick that up, convert that into a design thinking project, and who knows? Your students might just come up with some amazing uh, solution to the complex problem. So how is this entire aspect of artificial intelligence actually working? Now, let me talk about a situation or a case study. Uh, when I was going through my certification program, I was researching on how malls are working. Now, very interesting how malls of the future will work. And again, design thinking is a part of this conversation that I'm having. You enter a mall, right from the time you enter the mall, your mobile phone is syncing up with the intelligent system in the mall. You're going through the mall, and as you're passing different stores, you are being fed through an SMS on certain programs, initiatives that that particular store is taking. While that is happening, let's say you get interested in a particular store, or maybe it's a competing store which wants to pull you there. It starts feeding you information there, so you start getting flashes on your phone. But that's just the beginning of the experience. Then you enter a store. When you enter a store, the cameras are capturing you. You pick up a cart. The cart is RFID enabled. Now what's happening? Very interesting in analytics. It tracks the path that you're taking in a mall, in, a, in, in that store. It tracks, are you walking straight to a point or are you meandering? Are you going across? How much time are you spending at each self? Which, which products are you picking up? All that data is being captured by the artificial intelligence system. While this is happening, you're not only getting offers, but there are salespeople, customer service people in the store who are also getting an input that this person is probably looking for a particular product. And you might just have a person coming in. Very interesting case study. I mean, where does this whole thing, why did I connect with it? So there is a store I went to in Milan and uh, it's a fashion store that I went and I'm very, very, uh, you know, I love hats and I love jackets. So I wanted to buy there. It is a three storied store managed only by three people. And I was wondering as a management consultant, how does this happen? And I realized they let you free. The only thing they're doing is they're watching you. That's it. It's a human watching you. And the moment they see that you've shortlisted a couple of things, suddenly they will come there and the deal will happen. Now imagine this human being who's watching. If there is an artificial system that's watching this whole thing and it raises an alert to the customer service agent that this is a client who's looking for this, go and deal with it. Look how it works. High-end cars today are creating a complete showroom experience on our mobile devices, so much so that we can customize our cars. And this whole artificial intelligence engineering is actually happening for sure. But beyond that, let's talk about generative intelligence. It is something that is useful for academicians like you and me. Look at what is what I have written there. Generative AI refers to programs that can use existing content like text, audio files, videos, or images to create new plausible content. Now understand what's going to happen. You and me are going to create content. All this content is now going to be picked up by intelligent systems. They're going to mix and merge and they're going to create new content which is relevant for the days. Imagine the student fraternity will benefit so much in terms of the way the content arrives in front of them. Now, it's not only about videos and audios coming in front of them, but we're actually going ahead and they're picking up bytes and they're mixing and matching those bytes and the content is getting created. Again, very interesting. 
when we do design thinking of a prototype, there's a complete ecosystem that has to be built. Let's say there's a product that has been created. And if that particular product is an outcome of a design thinking project, for any product to sell, and engineers create product, management guys not only create product, but they also ensure that the product does well in the market. For any product to succeed, it requires a very strong enabled ecosystem. What is an ecosystem? Community, maybe digital devices, digital equipment, digital services. It could be the overall experiences that you create, the entire supply chain, the retail stores. And that's why we're going to be talking about business value chains and supply chains. The advertising agencies, everybody, your, your digital nomads, uh, your professionals who are working with you, all that put together. Now, what happens here is very simple. Your design thinking prototype with all the content that's readily available, you can have systems that will create the entire ecosystem, the content ecosystem, and the content ecosystem will boost the way the prototype scales in the market. That's the way it is going to work. And that's generative intelligence. I think this is going to help faculties, universities humongously. Web 3.0, like I said, these are intelligent websites, highly intelligent websites, third generation of internet services and websites. And they will use machine-based understanding of data to provide data-driven semantic web. Now, what is a semantic web? It's basically a standard that's being used in the web today, which is the intelligence standard. So the website is intelligent. It is throwing up all that you need. So you no longer need to only surf through the pages. As you put in what you need, it starts throwing up the relevant content in front of you. It will also mix and match and it's learning what you want. So next time when you're there, it's already got you what you want. Now, to a large extent, this is already happening on the different uh, sites that you visit. They keep a record of what you've done and therefore they start throwing up a lot of information that you would otherwise want. Even Google does that very efficiently. So Web 3.0 is the next thing. How is design thinking going to help you? Well, a lot of your engineers are going to be passing out. They may want to do design thinking projects around Web 3.0 because ultimately it is a user experience and there's a lot of work happening in the area of design thinking in the user experience for sure. Quantum computing. Uh, my case paper does talk about quantum computing also. Uh, here the computers are using qubits. Uh, which can be one or zero simultaneously. That means the combinations are infinite in their own way. It increases the power. Now, how is this going to help in design thinking? Let's say our students whom we train, whom we coach, become decide to take up design thinking as a specialization career. For instance, I am seriously looking at a career, I mean, I still have around 20, 25 years of productive time available to me professionally. I'm evolving myself as a person who would want to position himself or her as a person who's into design thinking. And I would definitely want to have a lot of protégés who would be a part of this whole community of mine. Now, if you have engineers passing out who want to take up their career as design thinking professionals, quantum computing because now what's going to happen with web 3.0 and quantum computing they will be involved in very very complex situations i mean i have dealt with some prototypes where the situations are extremely complicated let me share one story and i think quantum computing will become relevant to you a company which is into process control equipment very high precision process control equipment swiss company we were uh, doing a design thinking project with them. And what we had to do was, uh, it was a project where the new components which would be designed at the project stage, they were always having a problem of constant change requests with the vendor. The vendor not able to cater to it efficiently, no benchmarks available. The product passes, the, the component passes the quality test moves into the assembly line, chokes up the entire supply chain, deliveries get hampered, customers are dissatisfied, penalties happen, and ultimately uh, the shipment costs increase tremendously. Now with that happening, 
it's going to be a very tough proposition for the client. Now, the prototype that we were developing there integrated possibly not only the entire organization, but the logistics systems, the partners, everything was being integrated as a part of that particular process. Now, in that design thinking project, we created around 22 prototypes, which were combining together. So there were different teams working on different prototypes and they were combining together. A very complex design thinking project ran for three years. Happy to say, ultimately, they demolished the factory and raised the factory with 300% more capacity. That's the power of design thinking. Now, this project ran for three years. The amount of analysis, computing, the number of PhDs involved in doing this particular project was very, very amazing. And I think this project really value added to the whole dimension of design thinking in my case also. I personally benefited extensively from that. Now, if your people and if you as faculty are going to participate in such complex design thinking projects, which will come, I think India is now moving into the growth path of design thinking. We are going to be maturing very soon. Once that happens, we will need systems which can actually compute at very, very high power. And this quantum computing and 5G are integrating together. Therefore, design thinkers will also need to adopt themselves to quantum computing. They will need this as a part of their uh, prototyping project also. 5G, we're all talking about it. I'm waiting for it. One of the reasons I'm waiting for 5G is because it's gonna bring in tremendous amount of scope on uh, virtual augmented realities. And virtual augmented reality will change the way we teach completely. It will change the way we shop. It will change the entire business experience and customer experience. Not only it will deliver high speeds, it will also have the provision where it will operate with the bandwidth which may not be really, really hurting or creating noises. That's another thing that's going to happen. And it will thus provide very consistent user experiences. There's going to be no latency in it. You know, this whole streaming thing that happens, it takes time for us to really get into the experience. All that will be gone with 5G. Now, 5G is going to be so powerful that all the earlier technologies that I talked about will work seamlessly on this 5G. And I think with 5G coming in and my dream of creating virtual design thinking centers in universities, in colleges, in different organizations, that will become a reality because that computing power and the technology that's available, this 5G will revolutionize the way we work completely. Thank you, I see a lot of questions coming up. I will certainly start taking those questions by the time we hit around 12.35. I think I'm gonna need another 15, 20 minutes uh, before I can wind up the technology session. So 5G, going to revolutionize design thinking completely, augmented reality and prototyping going together completely. I am trying to build in augmented reality onto the virtual center of design thinking. Uh, I'm searching for certain plugins. Some amount has already happened. Uh, the books there are giving you the augmented reality. Uh, 3D versions already available there. But what is augmented reality going to do? Now, what happens in augmented reality is that we are actually getting into a perceptual reality. I'm sure all of you know about that. But see what's going to happen. A person will be able to experience your prototype through visual, auditory, sensations, haptic, you know, your sensory perceptions, smell, that's the way the augmented reality will work. And if we are able to create such prototypes and typically in architecture, augmented reality and architecture will go completely hand in hand. I think an experience of what it is to get into a car and drive a car, an experience, in fact, in my, uh, in my artificial intelligence course, I was going through a case study where if, you, if one goes to a store and if you want to wear the clothes and see how they look like, and you want to show it to some other people, you actually have an intelligent system where you can make a choice of people. You, you kind of take that particular uh, fabric, you don't wear it, you just take a snapshot of that fabric, it maps you, 
and you have an image of yourself available that image is accessed by multiple people and you get a feedback there and then as to how the fabric looks on you we are actually moving into the space of augmented reality and augmented reality and prototypes if your prototypes in the virtual world can be experienced by infinite number of people as a real time prototype and you're able to run your analytics and feedback and statistical scores based on that the testing of prototype becomes a lot more easy in augmented reality virtual reality now obviously augmented reality is beyond virtual reality but the base starts with virtual reality now what is virtual reality if you see the picture there the person is wearing a headgear and through that headgear is simulating the entire environment in a 3d space around him or her this is currently available that's why i put it after the augmented reality but the difference between virtual reality and augmented reality would be that the augmented reality is going to give us a complete somatosensory experience it's going to completely move into the experience of five senses whereas virtual reality currently may be restricted only to some amount of feelings that the human body generates and to a large extent the visual and the auditory experience that one is going through but in teaching augmented reality and virtual reality will certainly help because uh, when in fact in certain schools in the west they are already experimenting with students learning through uh, the augmented and the virtual reality processes where whatever they are learning if it is made visible for instance in medical sciences if the entire anatomy of a human body can be experienced through virtual reality you don't have to really get into uh, physical stuff you can train yourself through virtual reality and then you can get into the real time scenarios so augmented reality virtual reality absolutely a proposition for sure i want to give you an experience um, uh, in one of the countries in europe while i was there i love to visit factories and i love to see the experience of how the product gets created so i once went to a factory which was creating uh, some beverages and uh, they actually took me through the entire process as to you know they treat you as the raw material of the beverage and you go through the entire process that a raw material goes through and you understand how the beverage was created now some amount of augmented reality and virtual reality is already been created as a customer experience or to attract customers and the best part of it is you, you start connecting with the brand so this is the power of the virtual reality and augmented reality metaverse i talked about it some time back when i opened up my conversation metaverse is the future it's the complete future uh in fact a lot of people who are offering cloud based services are going completely into metaverse facebook will go into metaverse uh, a lot of other micro websites will move into metaverse uh, it's going to be a complete reality now what is metaverse going to do like i said if a faculty is hologram and if multiple faculties holograms are moving into a 3d space online and the students move in 3d space online they don't have to travel anymore through international boundaries so let's not think in terms of only local stuff interestingly what's happening with metaverse in teaching is that the entire uh, classroom can keep happening 24 by 7 transcripts are available you can rewind all that is done but what else will metaverse do metaverse will allow us to move through the cultural boundaries metaverse will allow us to operate borderless and how will it help in design thinking well metaverse and design thinking centers built around metaverse people will come into the metaverse they will run design thinking labs which means a person may code up his or her design thinking ideas the hologram sits in the room there does the work along with the other holograms comes out you come back again have a look at what's happened you want to make any changes you can make the changes so you're able to optimize your time or maximize your time if i were to say with metaverse completely we at atya sir are working on a project of metaverse where we want to bring in design thinking and metaverse together uh the website address that i've given you is already moving into the space of metaverse and as the technology evolves uh our students because i consider myself as a part of your team our students will also start getting an experience 
which will be a 3D real-time experience on Metaverse. Internet of Things, big. And I think in design thinking, Internet of Things is going to be a absolute game changer. Why do I say that? I say that because let's say if the prototype that has been created and it is being given for testing, let's say we went through the entire process of design thinking, we created a prototype, and now the prototype is enabled through IoT. Now, if the prototype is enabled through IoT, and if people are taking that experience of the prototype, maybe a physical prototype, or I don't know, maybe IoT will also move into metaverse, the day that happens. If that were to happen, the analytics is running super speed. If the analytics is running super speed, we will be able to come up with a very high probability on whether that particular design thinking problem, the solution that has been come up with, will it succeed, will it not succeed? So IoT, and I think in product design, I mean design thinking with for product design, engineering product designs, IoT enabled design thinking prototypes is definitely there. And I think your students need to pick up projects around enablement of IoT in design thinking. Big data analytics, big thing now. In fact, a lot of students are going overseas to do their masters in the areas of big data analytics. Big data, is going to give us structured, semi-structured, unstructured data, completely making it possible for us to go through the entire design thinking stages with whatever data we need, completely the way we want it or the way we don't want it. And if we want to work on it, we will get all sorts of data. And I think the terabytes to zettabytes of data that we're talking about on big data is going to ensure that the analytics that we run on design thinking can be fabulous. We are no longer restricted by the sample size that we humanly can possibly interview. We've got the entire data available and the earlier conversations that I had in terms of how our systems are constantly feeding up to the intelligent systems in the cloud. Big data is definitely integrating into design thinking. 3D printing, I love the concept. 3D printing is going to redefine the entire manufacturing process. 3D printing will redefine the entire civil engineering, mechanical engineering, electronics, architecture, everywhere. Uh, look at the picture. The heart is being printed with a 3D printer. Maybe SkyFi right now, but I know liver is already printed. If the liver is already printed, that means we are on our way now. And like I said, 3D printing will make manufacturing process of any particular engineering stream simplified. Now, you know, when I was doing my certification on 3D printing, I realized that on the cloud, there are going to be so many designs available. You can pick up a design, you can make modifications by yourself in the design, and you can print it at home or it can be printed on a shop floor. Now, if that's going to happen, if that's the power of 3D printing we're looking at, prototyping will become so easy. What is happening now? People will create a prototype in a design center, which is virtual. There will be a drawing that's available in a virtual space. That drawing will feed to the 3D printing and you got the prototype ready. And the clay model that earlier design, thing, design industrial design guys used to use now you have a 3d printed model and people can actually test the whole thing and therefore you know when we're talking about prototype normally this whole process of alpha beta pre-production prototype and then ultimately the finished product that comes out i think the pre-production part will be completely eliminated with the 3d printing because we no longer need to feed a prototype to our partners so that they can create their own manufacturing process the 3D prototype will get printed from the printer and we got a prototype. Time to bring the prototype out completely crunched. This is the power of 3D printing. Blockchains. I love it. I mean, I don't want to get into the, the idea of cryptocurrency. I'm not a party to that at all. But blockchains, uh, I mean, the amount of distributed data which is democratized data, 
everybody having access to every data on the blockchain and design thinkers now getting access to the entire transaction distributed across the entire network on the blockchain i think it's going to redefine the entire aspect of design thinking completely i'm looking forward to blockchain evolving blockchain data for design thinking right from the empathize process to prototyping uh, systems which are archiving the prior data so that we can get intelligent insights out of it i think blockchains is definitely definitely the in thing that we're looking at uh, so it is also going to make people difficult to change hack or cheat the system so again it is going to protect our intellectual properties for sure why did we do this session i think the principal message that we need to give our students is design thinking is future enabling with technology will permit the scaling up of the technology completely and i think that's the advantage that we are looking at with technology it is becoming imperative therefore design thinking and technology weaves in but i want to go to einstein's statement imagination is more important than knowledge and i think technology is going to allow our imaginations to really come into a tangible form which otherwise was going to be extremely difficult so i think one of the motivators of going the technology way in design thinking is the pure motivation that i can crunch the design thinking process completely and come out with a prototype is what technology allows us to do in a shorter period of time the next sessions obviously will move through value chain management supply chain management and a lot of time uh, professors in engineering colleges tend to ask me is it relevant to engineers are we reducing the efficiency of engineers and i always tell them no we are not reducing the efficacy at all what we are actually doing is we are giving them a tool by which they can bring engineering into business that's what we are doing and therefore our subsequent processes and i am also thankful to the university that they've built in all this as a part of the curriculum some of your students may come and ask you why are we doing this it is more to do with relevant to management but not true i think the engineers need to know this to move into design thinking keep in touch i want to take questions now for sure if you have any questions please do put in i've already given you the center of excellence link in any case let me start looking at the questions i'll answer the questions and then we will uh, look at ending on time for sure uh sir kindly suggest any prerequisite for the student point no prerequisite at all professor uh, no no prerequisite at all i think as long as we can create an excitement in the minds of the student to learn design thinking no problem at all do not measure or weigh and yesterday like we talked about the rosenthal effect if we are able to clean up our own system and say now design thinking is beneficial for students and it'll help i think students are okay do we have any textbooks for design thinking concept yeah uh, i think somebody's already uh, given the details of the uh, book thank you very much there are textbooks that are prescribed for sure as per video scheme it is mcq exam without prescribed book is it possible for a first year student to appear for the exam why not there's a lot of digital content available there's a lot of digital content that you can make and they can certainly appear for the exam no problem uh let's let's look at it like this design thinking is an experiential process and as they experience the process if they move through the design thinking concept i don't think they're going to have a problem uh but i think you could do that you could uh, create your own content and uh, maybe i mean i was told that the books that have that are available on design thinking are extremely expensive so maybe uh, you know the students may not have an access to it uh, the books are already written there by dr anupama uh, check out what they cost but i think they're expensive if that were to happen you can create your own uh, notes you can get on to our virtual center and take whatever uh, content you want and you can build the questions around that no problem at all 
All right, these are textbooks. So kindly give us an example how these trends of technology can be implemented in design thinking. The entire technology that I spoke about for the last three and a half hours, the technology primarily is for gathering data, taking intelligent decisions, providing experience on the prototype, which is a near real-time experience on the prototype, gathering analytics again, conducting hypothesis testing, and conducting further design thinking, and also creating virtual design thinking centers. If we put all that together, that's how the trends of technology are being implemented in design thinking. Uh, please comment on how these advancements in technology are actually going to redefine the role of a faculty in the 21st century. Faculties are going to become extremely powerful, extremely important in the 21st century. Let me emphasize that because my area of research is the volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous world. Let me talk about that and then I think the perspective of the faculty will put into place. The design thinking component will also come into place. Volatility. Every business operates in an environment. The environment comprises of drivers. And these drivers either support or don't support the business. When we talk about volatility, we say that these drivers, like in a periodic table, these drivers would evaporate. They would cease to exist. And if these drivers cease to exist, that means we will have to come up with newer ways of doing things. Uncertain. We don't know when will this evaporate. And if we don't know when this will evaporate, we got a problem. So one, it is volatile, but we don't know when it is going to be volatile. That's one part. Second part, third part, complex. The behavior of these drivers itself is extremely complex. That means I can't predict how this particular driver, even if it is not in the space of volatility, it is existing, how is it going to behave? And ultimately the A stands for ambiguity in Google. The ambiguity part is these drivers cannot be correlated. Now, if we are entering the VUCA world, can you imagine the amount of knowledge that this world would require to become successful? And I think that's where the importance of faculties will grow. In the ancient times also, when the guru was extremely important, was a time where there was a lot of chaos everywhere. We are now entering a space of turbulence. And turbulence is a lot of chaos, which can be controlled only through knowledge. And therefore, faculties are going to be in absolute demand. And I'm already seeing that where a lot of corporate professionals have exited their profession and have become faculties. There is one person in front of you talking to you already. Please comment on how these advancements in technologies actually redefine the role of faculty in the present situation. Faculties will have to become tech savvy. Faculties will have to publish. Faculties will have to create content. We will have to become very, very friendly with technologies. And if we can do that, that's when the faculties will become extremely relevant. I think so. Currently, the, the area of research that I'm doing in the VUCA world is saying that one, all professionals need to go international. That means your body of work must move international. Number two, you should be able to create a lot of tech savvy content. Number three, the ability to solve very complex problems. In fact, the curriculum will also need to undergo change as the VUCA world becomes a reality because a lot of new paradigms will shape up. In fact, in my research, I, I have created a new business model that companies now need to deploy to become resilient. The earlier dimensions and dynamics of management may not help companies to survive in a new VUCA world. And therefore, we will need faculties who can train up corporate professionals as well as students. Now, another shift that I'm seeing is the corporate world is now nominating a lot of their professionals to come for higher education. If that's happening, 
then faculties become all the more relevant. Also, educational institutions need to cater to that particular clientele also. Professor Giri Prakash, how these trends of technology can be implemented in design thinking? Well, they weave into design thinking completely. I think every part of the technology that I spoke about is weaving into technology completely. And if our design thinking prototypes do not integrate the future technologies, then it is not design thinking because we are creating things that are outdated. Big stores managed only by three people. What is your take on artificial intelligence replacing manpower? Manpower, which is good, will never be replaced. Don't worry at all. And like I keep saying in every session of mine in corporates, only the redundant manpower shall get replaced. Any standard operating procedure will be driven by technology. But creation of knowledge, creation of pure knowledge, creation of new knowledge, creativity, innovation, that will always be the human being. So as long as those human beings are adept with the new way of working, I don't think they should be happening. This, Sir, how do we integrate these into a curriculum? Well, you have a presentation. Uh, my suggestion to you is just take it up as a theory process and just give an information and input to your students as to how the technology trend is happening. And uh, that should work, should not be a problem at all. All right, feedback link, feedback link, feedback link. Okay. Uh, module 5 for design thinking workshop. Okay, we'll wait. Design thinking workshop, empathize, design, idea, prototype. How do you, how you go about this? All right, let me share how do I do my consulting business on design thinking because you will also interface with industry and you must know this. Firstly, charge. Don't do anything free because design thinking requires a lot of intellectual capability and intellect must be charged. That's one. Understand that your clients do not know what the problem is. Therefore, work out a clear contract document. And the way the contract document operates is you are charging them for training their employees on design thinking, which is part one. So there's a charge for part one. Part two is the charge for creation of the prototype that is running the entire uh, project itself. Part three is prototyping and testing. And part four is scaling. Charge on these parts. Your client can pick and choose what they want. And you are just facilitating this process of empathize, design, idea, prototype, and test. Pick up the best of the manpower from that particular industry. Get them as a part of your workout process. And let them be the ones who take the accountability for creation of prototype. You are a teacher. You are a guru who is helping them to prototype. That's it. If you take the responsibility of prototyping, it goes contrary to design thinking principles because diversity of experience gets compromised. That's the way it works. You and me will operate as consultants in the design thinking process, but we will not participate in building a prototype. But we will give inputs on how the prototype is to be built. We'll give frameworks on building of the prototype. That's how it goes. So I think most of your colleges, as I see, are engineering colleges and management colleges put together. I think both of you can come together, pick and choose the projects, and uh, you know the industry experience for faculty also grows. Therefore, that's how it would go. Uh, feedback form, feedback form. Whether design thinking should be confined only to first year policy decision, I leave it to you. I do not want to really get into it. That's between you and the university. Sir, has design thinking been used for creative interventions in mental health? Healthcare, yes. Mental health in the techniques of building an ecosystem, uh, yes. Design thinking is being used extensively in that area. But if you're talking about the treatment or the line of treatment and design thinking being used for that, I don't think so. I don't think so at all. It is 1240. Uh, if there are any questions, I'm willing to take. Otherwise, the feedback link is there. You can get on to your feedbacks. And uh, I am not extending this further. It's 1240. We can end the session here. Thank you very much.